Welcome everyone. This is part two of my engine dismantling for my 1949 AC. Part one covered the easy bits. Now to the two areas I was bracing myself for. Firstly to extract the cylinder liners. I'd read four articles on this from the 1980s. Two of them used electric heaters to gently heat and expand the alloy block, resulting in liners falling out. Another one made an extractor and had no major problems. The fourth one used a club hammer which did the trick. I did hear of someone suing a company in the 1990s after they smashed the cylinders attempting their removal. A bigger challenge is the removal of the 14 head studs. My engine is one of the rare ones with equal length studs which means they won't work with the new cylinder head. They go 6.5 inches deep into the alloy albeit poking out at the bottom. I scraped around the studs ready to spray them with Aerocryl penetrating oil. Then used a stud extractor that grips the plane shank. It leaves deep teeth marks so it can't be used for studs that need to be reused. A few wax with a hammer might help. Hard to believe, but this stud is unscrewing. No rust or corrosion, but the long thread with carbon on it creates a lot of friction. I kept adding more aerocroil to the studs. While that penetrating oil soaks in, I can remove the oil pump from the sump via this access plate. Then slacken these four bolts. Normally you would drop the pump out with the bolt still in if the engine was on the car. base plate can be checked for wear. This one has a small amount of wear in the centre, suggesting it was slightly dome shaped.
Getting back to the liners, the electric heater approach did not yield results. With a hot spell of weather, I heated the block in the sun, although it appears to have gone in here. Then heated the block further with hot but not boiling water, spreading the heat over the whole block. A bit of bashing eventually shifted liners 3 and 4. And here they are with lots of lime scale. I think they had halite glass gaskets which superseded the original copper asbestos versions. Here are the bores and seating in the block. The alloy sump looks nice and clean now. I'm rinsing the filter gauze in kerosene followed by POR15 metal cleaner. Time to tackle cylinders 5 and 6. Having heated the block in the sun, drawing a heat wave, I'm placing an ice bag in number 5 cylinder and heating the block further. They still won't move. Here I am on our hottest day on record, 38 degrees C or 100 in Fahrenheit in the shade, but the engine has spent a few hours in the sun. Guess what? It worked. Look closely and you can see cylinders 5 and 6 poking out under the upturned engine. The ends of the liners are reduced in outside diameter slightly so that final removal is easier. Here you can see the part remove cylinder liners more clearly. A second stud came out off camera, but none of the other 12 will budge. While they soak in more aerocoil, I drilled off the screws holding the clips while the spark plug leads. These screws straight into the water jacket so you can imagine how corroded they were.
More battles with the studs, no success. Time to bring in some specialist assistance. My good friend Chris Wayman was met via a mutual interest in Delta diesel locomotives where Chris is something of a legend. He also has over 60 years experience machining car engines. Push him up a little bit if you can and take the weight off this, that's it. Lovely job. We've got the whole thing this time. He brought a liner extractor. Liners five and six that were already half removed came out easily. Yep, yeah, that'll do, yep. Yeah. Uh, which one do you... It's a bit far out, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Put, this, put this over here. That's so giving you a hole yeah. to get through. Yeah. So the plate's not going to fall off. Yeah, that's going to come up through there. That'll be, that'll be here, so if you get the... If you get the stud, put it up. On liners one and two, I had already managed to break off a piece of each skirt, despite only using wood against them, and this was going to be a problem with Chris's extractor. Right, now you need to look to make sure that's gone in the right place. Feels as though it's gone in. But of course, that, that, that's, further, that's further down than the other one is, because the others were half out, weren't they? Yeah, so feel the edge of the liners. Does it look as if it's in the right place? You need to make sure because if it cockles, it will split them straight away. Then we are in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's in. Right. Okay. We'll get some weight on him then. So it moved. That's the bottom of the line split. No. Now you are in trouble. Um. Cylinder 2 skirt has shattered. We are in trouble. Chris is going to make another line of bong with a larger flange to see if that will work on liner number 1. Liner number 2 will need to be trimmed before another attempt. Hopefully part 3 of this video will be the final one. Did you like the way Chris and I remained calm as a liner broke? A sign of true veterans of the joys of restoration. There was no editing for language. See you next time.